Christoph, good afternoon, and thank you so much for joining us to talk a little bit about the port of Antwerp. Thank you. Good afternoon, Kelly. The pleasure is all my side. Christoph, how do ports internationalize their knowledge and experience, especially the port of Antwerp in this case? In general, you, you really see a trend of, and it, it's a European trend of, of port authorities who are setting up international activities. Uh, we, we had in the past, let's call it a wave in the Middle East and in China, where local ports became global players. And now you see a little bit, but on a, on a different approach, uh, you see that uh, also all, almost all European ports are going for, uh, for, for a knowledge-driven approach. And we as Port of Antwerp, with our training center, but also with our international consulting and investment activity, we, we are also following that path. And we are really going, uh, we really try to achieve good international presence, uh, in good international presence, uh, a, a little bit all over the world, and certainly in our certainly in our key markets, it's 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 really being uh, it, it's really uh, it, it's really a, a knowledge driven partnerships that are becoming more and more important in my opinion. Now let's talk about the changing role of a port from a landlord port to a real community builder. Can you tell me a bit more about that? Okay, it's. Of course, I can. Uh, the uh, traditionally ports were 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 infrastructure managers, eh? and from purely infrastructure builders, they moved to to more an authority side, to to, to landlord, and so on. I think everybody now is getting more and more convinced that that there is more to do, eh? and that's that that that's what we are really promoting. That ports needs to become community builders. It's their responsibility to fight for their port. Because you see a further and further internationalization of all players in ports. So you see shipping lines, but also the terminal handling companies and so on. They're becoming very international. And who is fighting really for your port? That's becoming the port authority. And so that's why ports need to reach out more internationally, but also should, if, and, together with, the, with their port community, should be involved in, in our opinion, in, 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 new, in technological innovation, in setting up data platforms, sharing, uh, environment, SDGs. There are, a lot of, there are a lot of things where a port can really be a community builder and where, 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 where the port ecosystem can, can, can prosper a lot of this kind of collaboration. And, and, and that's where we strongly believe in, that it's not that it's, it's not only not infrastructure anymore, of course infrastructure remains important, but the main driver will be really towards the community building role. Christoph, how exactly do ports contribute to the development of a country or a specific region, especially the ports of Antwerp? It depends, it, it depends a lot, but uh, and I certainly in, in, in COVID-19 uh, times, I think all ports show, show their importance uh, in, in keeping supply chains going. Huh? Um, it's, um, I think in most, uh, in, in most countries all over the world, ports are, uh, are a huge contributor to GDP. And for the Port of Antwerp, to give you an idea, Port of Antwerp is contributing 6% uh, to, to, to Belgium GDP. Uh, there are examples in Africa where certain ports are contributing 30 or 40 percent to the country's GDP. Uh, so it, it, it's really, uh, it's really, an, 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 it creates an ecosystem where you really can create prosperity. And why I'm stating that? Because we, we strongly believe what support, and maybe that's important. We really see the link and try to promote it internationally that a port is a combination of cargo handling, of logistic activities, but also from industrial development, for industrial development. Ports are ideal locations for, for industrial development, and therefore they're creating, can create huge employment. Just to give you an idea, within the port of Antwerp, we are direct and indirect employing 160,000 people. Uh, so for a rather small country as Belgium, that's enormous. 
but the potential, uh, the potential one, and uh, the potential for economic development, that, that one, but also supply chains keep on going, everything, foods need to come in and out, imports, exports, forget it without, for, forget it without good functioning seaports. And third reason for why, why efficient ports are important is, uh, of course, price levels. You see in countries where ports are, less, let's call it, um, not dysfunctional, but more when there are a lot of challenges on port performance, you see that people in the streets are paying it in the, in, in the food prices they're paying in the supermarkets. All those inefficiencies are adding up to the price of imported and exported cargo. So that's for me a very, also a very important uh, uh, argument about port efficiency. And people are thinking ports are far away or they're polluting or why, why should I be interested? The, fun the, the, the functioning of ports determines the price you are paying for your goods in a supermarket or a grocery store or whatever. Uh, but I think that are for me the three, the, the three major drivers why ports are important and they can play a vital economic role in an uh, in, in, in national economy. Now something I'm quite interested in is smart and sustainable port development. Christoph, where are we when it comes to that? Oh, nowhere. <laughs> there are a lot of, uh, uh, there are a lot, let's, let's call on smart. Eh? On, on smart, there is, a, there is a lot of evolution. There is a lot of, uh, a lot of things are, 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 are happening. So that, that's the positive uh, side. The, uh, I strongly believe in, in, in a bigger role for ports and port authorities in, in the smart evolution because you need in, the whole exchange of data, it, it's, of course, it's about exchange of data. You're, uh, you need a neutral partner, somebody you can trust to, to make this data exchange possible. And their port authorities can play a vital role because, because to make ports really smart and to have all the data available, of course, all those partners, all those uh, shipping lines, terminal operations, shipping agents, logistic operations should they should share their data uh, to a, and, and to a neutral platform because, of course, there are a lot of comp competitive data that you don't want to share with everyone. So there, there are a lot of initiatives. The uh, but I think we're only at the beginning. Uh, there, are, there, the room for improvement is uh, certainly when you see it globally uh, is is really huge, and certainly on supply chain, uh, everything on supply chain. That's first part of your question. On sustainability, there we're working very hard. There we are, uh, maybe well short on the port of Antwerp. In our new strategic plan, every uh, strategic priority there will be a link between strategic priority and an SDG. Uh, so um, on, on sustainable development, we really think that it will become key for your license to operate. That's one, but also it can really become a competitive advantage. So that's why we are uh, now focusing uh, a lot on, on trends, not only on, on, on the sustainability of the port, but also on sustainability of shipping, sustainable energy, uh, a lot of innovation, uh, new, new, new old models for tugboats, uh, autonomous things. There, 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 there really is a link because it, it, it's really vital for our future Certainly, with everything about blue economy, water quality, uh, uh, all uh, uh, the, the further greenhouse problematics, uh, and, and 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 so on, it will really be crucial for ports that they show that they are a part of a solution and not a part of the problem. And I think, uh, uh, but also there, uh, uh, there are the situation in the world is. Uh, is totally different from place to place. And there are still a lot of opportunities to really actively work with it. Because the, in my, and that's maybe a, a, a very blunt, uh, a very blunt statement, uh, is that the, that, that ports are, and ports and organizations in general are often using SDGs as a, as a kind of billboard but are not really working or doing uh, something about it. So there, we, we, on both sides, I think there is a very good and positive evolution, 
but we still need, uh, uh, I, I think on uh, the everything what's IT, we are, we are furthering the evolution on everything what's uh, sustainability and SDGs. There is still uh, a long way to go, but we also have the clear ambition to become a front runner in that field. And I think we'll get there slowly but surely. <laughs> Now let's focus on the present. What impact has COVID-19 had on port operations and what have been the results? For the moment, it's, uh, of course, uh, of course, uh, there have been, uh, it, it has been a stretch uh, to keep ports operational uh, within the, within everything what's happening within COVID-19 and, and, and so on. But it worked. Uh, if you see to most ports in the world, they proved that they are reliable partners in the supply chain. They moved. They proved that uh, that they were capable of uh, uh, of continuing their operations. Uh, there are not a lot of ports that really had to shut down uh, in, in the world. So I think that's that that, that that's a major achievement we cannot underestimate. Uh, in, in most ports, people people and seafarers really worked a lot to keep the operations. Uh, to, to keep the operations going. What, yeah, of course the impact is depending a little bit on which cargo type you are active, it's, uh, it's impacting you a lot. And for, for the moment, uh, uh, for the moment in Antwerp, after six months, we were still growing containers, overall minus five. So that's a rather good performance, uh, but it will be, uh, it really, it, it really are, uh, what we used to call uh, uh, VUCA times, eh? where VUCA stands for volatile, uncertain, complex, and ambiguous, uh, in, in, in one word. So there, I think for ports to deliver now a good integrated service, there are a lot of opportunities uh, after after COVID crisis. We really proved our relevance uh, to, 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 a larger com to, to a larger community. Uh, but of course, financially and economically, uh, the short-term outlook, uh, the short-term outlook is not that positive uh, for the moment. So there will, uh, uh, there. But the, of course, in, in 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 every crisis, you have uh, uh, you 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 have winners and losers, and there it's for everybody. Yeah, everybody is now think, now fighting to become. The winner of this, the winner of the crisis, and so that will uh, that 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 will see. But in, in the longer term, uh, we are not believers that you have the international trends trends uh, to toward, towards less international trades towards uh, again local produce uh, and, and so on. Uh, let's say for some specific niche, maybe it can be the case. But in general, we are uh, a strong believer that uh, international trade uh, will become a strong again. Christoph, thank you so much for your time this afternoon. And I You're can't wait welcome. to welcome you to the event next year in 2021 to Transport Evolution Africa. And I hope that you stay safe. Um, I and hope the same for you all. Uh, that situation in South Africa also stabilizes. Yes, we hope so too.